Welcome back to the Bahamas and welcome back to this ocean rowing recovery mission. If you're new around here, we've got the task and by we, I mean myself and two British soldiers, Jack and Brucey, of recovering this abandoned ocean rowing boat from an island called Eleuthera in the northern parts of the Bahamas all the way over 250 nautical miles down to the mainland USA and we are starting day five now after being stormbound on a remote quay for a couple of days we've managed to get some food in and meet a lovely family and we're back on the open ocean and the graft never stops so we've just set off about an hour ago and the task for this video is to make our way over 80 nautical miles from where we are now down to the Bimini Islands. And that takes us one step closer to recovering this boat to Florida. We were on a two hours on, two hours off rotor at the moment through the day and through the night. Brucey is putting in shift number one and we're 15 minutes away from our next changeover. We don't know what to expect, but we know that we can expect the unexpected because everything has been a wild ride so far. From our initial journey from Eleuthera in that first stint down to the Royal Yachting Club in Nassau, greeted with sandwiches, and then making the late decision to push through the night to try and get to a remote key before the weather changed, and then meeting the only family that live on that remote island and they treated us like family before the weather changed again and we had to hold stations for a couple of days. Now we're in the open ocean, we're trying to make our way over there. So there's not much left to do other than push on, try and avoid sunburn in this relentless sun. How are we feeling boys? Yeah, good mate. Pretty relaxed, yeah, pretty relaxed, pretty chilled. Ready to start rowing in 15 minutes. And it looks like we've got the wind and the current on our side, so we've picked our time in nicely. Favourable conditions over the next two days. And then after these two days looks to change, so... Yeah, we need to make hay while the sun shines. Very smooth day on very smooth seas. We've been moving at around three knots, at least for most of the day, to be honest. The shifts are going well. It's now half past three. And also we made our way through a very busy waterway, had some chats with some passing by boats. It's brilliant when they get on the radio and say, oh my God, you guys are rowing. That's awesome. Brucey likes to do a good American impression as well. I'll get him to show you that later. It's yeah. better than yours, Adam, eh? You didn't like that? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're pushing on nicely. We've obviously picked a decent weather window so far and plowing through into the night. Obviously, ship in the background there, you can just about see, ship over there. Ship over there, you can see, ship over there. Ship over there, we're just always dodging our way through this waterway and pushing on nicely. Time for some pineapple slices very shortly and I'm gonna get some Gatorade in now. And the end of an eventless day five is good news for us because it's been very calm paddling, but bad news for you because there's been no treacherous action. You see how calm the seas have been all day, nailing well over three knots when there's two of us on, just shy of three when it's one on. So making fantastic progress, 30 nautical miles completed, giving us a further 50 before we get to the Bimini Islands. We're gonna push on and plug on through the night. I'm gonna take you with us for dinner tonight as well because we've got a fantastic selection. The boys have doubled up on uh, this right here. Fettuccine Alfredo with chicken, that's all the other two are having. And chicken korma with rice is mine. Testing out a few different options. Jack, how are you feeling today, mate? Good to go, mate. Feeling strong. Nice. Days, yeah, a couple of days rest, mate. My hands feeling great, my feet feeling good. Back's not too sore, hamstrings aren't too sore. But yeah, feeling good, morale's high. But I am looking forward to dinner, I can't lie. <laughs> I think all of us are the same in terms of injuries and blisters as well. They, that two days off really helped everything heal. So yeah, the hands are still sore and they'll continue to be and the blisters are still rife, but they calmed down and they de-inflamed a bit. Excited to push through the night and the way things are looking, depending on conditions, we should get to Bimini by at some point in daylight hours tomorrow. So very exciting. And what we have in store there could be very exciting as well because it's a brand new island and you don't know how we're gonna get treated. Based on how we've been treated the last couple of times, it's gonna be a treat. So let's plug on through the night and get this dinner down us. Dinner time, it is 8 p.m. Jack's getting his Alfredo in. Bruce, he's had his, how was yours, mate? Nice decent indeed. <laughs> Big fan. I don't even know what Alfredo is. So that's from Lord, Lord of the Rings, isn't it? No, uh, you're thinking of Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah, no, nice, quite creamy consistency. Do you work for him now? Pardon? Like I don't, mate. And they didn't give us, us, us these for free either. But I'm all for, as is Adam, shouting out good quality 
for sure. We've been a lot. Most of our stuff has been backpack country, except for those raviolis in the tea. Yeah. Enjoying? Mate, really nice. I mean, I'm trying this one. Expedition Foods Korma with rice. So. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna have this in a wrap. That's a very good idea. That's the best idea. I think the remnants of this packet speak for itself. That was an absolutely delicious meal from the British Expedition Foods Chicken Korma. Plenty more on the way where that came from. The big beacon is on and there's no other ships in the vicinity. And now we plow on into the night. We're actually doing the first shift into the darkness. Let's go. Jack? Let's go! Let's go, Jack! <laughs> Sorry, I'm out for the food. <laughs> That is never easy, getting up after very limited sleep. Just done my 1 a.m. till 4 a.m. sleep. And I'm up at four now for two hours. About to row with Brucey for two hours before, yeah, continuing with two hours on, two hours off. What happens now? Now I get changed. Oh yeah, last night uh, the oar came off. So we were just paddling along. Um, Brucey had just started his shift and the oar detached on the right hand side on my oar. Not good news at all, but we managed to salvage it. I uh, had to turn around. It's really a, a nightmare when you have to turn around because it takes, takes a couple of minutes to turn around. Then you've got to fight, fight, obviously, the winds and currents that we've tried to aim for in the first place. But we got it. It was just about floating enough and we had to then properly tighten, tighten and screw it in. And then I got some Gorilla Tape on there as well. So anyway, it's got five minutes now. Get on the oars and keep cracking. Another night survived. We did it. Ah, five hours sleepish for everyone all around. And we are in the region of 20 nautical miles out from Bimini now. So we've really, really made some good progress. It's been quite calm seas and we had the wind and the current in our favor at the start, but overnight, not so much, but at least it wasn't against us. So just plugging on, plowing through. Depending on weather, we're gonna be on Bimini for a couple of days. So a bit more island fun, which uh, can never be sniffed at. We've got, this for breakfast this morning, one of our last few tins. The spaghetti and meatballs is one of the favorites all around from everyone, I believe. And then we've got some more freeze dry rations after that before we try and chance our way through the docks in Bimini because no one knows we're coming. We obviously don't want to pay anyone anything. So it's going to be a case of turning up and please, please, sir, can we moor our boat? And, and please, can we have somewhere to stay or maybe book something as well? It's all up in the air. So to say we're all a bit knackered after this long slog of 36 hours. We're sitting now at half past 12 in the afternoon and we've just got our first sighting of Bimini behind us, which is extremely exciting. And we've got this Gatorade crystal clear water. Oh, it's the best water in the world that, look at that. That's what we're rowing through. Bruce is on the oars now. I'm gonna hop on literally two minutes now as well, actually. And we're gonna make that final push to the less than 10 nautical miles left on this journey to get to Bimini. And who knows what we've got in store there. We might have a bit of a weather hold again. Plenty of activities and also some good grub before we make the final push all the way over to the mainland USA. There she is, Bimini right behind us at just over a mile away. So we're gonna tap, tap, tap her in now and see where we can land. And then we've got 48 hours worth of adventures to be had. How many beers, Brucey? What do you reckon? You can always be tempted, can't you? Yeah, quite a few. <laughs> We're basically pirates at this point. Boat is tied off. I'm gonna try and get some food in now as well. We're walking through the town. Well, I don't know if you can call this a town. We're walking along a road and there's some actually nice houses. They're not derelict, they're well kept. There's no one in them. So we're gonna try and find somewhere to eat now. But for context, the main town of this island is about six miles away. So we're gonna to have to do a bit of walking. Can you pronounce it like a French person? Petite con, la petite con, la petite. <laughs> That's where we're going. We're walking through this coniferous road now with a view to an end of getting a 
beer and some food. Succulent Chinese meal. Oh yeah, succulent Chinese meal, exactly. We are six miles away from the main town in Bimini, which is kind of not ideal actually, especially if we want to get a dive in or hang out in town in the evenings. It might be a case of getting some accommodation and then leaving the boat for 24 hours or so. The plan is evolving by the minute. I'm now in the back of a truck with the boys. So we met a lovely lady named Cheryl on our walk through and she helped us clue us up with what's going on in this part of the island and the main parts of the island. And where we put the boat, we, we pretty much assumed it wasn't safe and now we're sure it wasn't safe. So we're gonna grab it now, we've, it's half past five. So we've got a little bit of daylight left. It's, it's dusty in here, isn't it? We've got a little bit of daylight left, get the boat moved and Cheryl's gonna let us put it in front of her dock and then we're gonna find some accommodation options. She's let us sleep on the floor of the outhouse as well, potentially, or she gave some room recommendations. So we are, we're all very hungry, so we're gonna paddle like to get the boat moored and then get some food in. Mission success, Jack. Give me one of these. Bash. Boat has been secured outside Cheryl's house. It's like GTA this. We just had a private jet whiz past and there's loads of these like million dollar equivalent houses. We've got a shower here. We're gonna get some scram now because we're extremely hungry. What do you reckon Brucey would do if I pushed him in? That'd be so funny, wouldn't oh, it? Oh no, <laughs> I need the shower anyway. <laughs> That'd be pretty unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Brucey and I have just said we've stopped trying to predict the craziness that's gonna happen on this trip. We're back in the dustmobile. Cheryl's kindly let us have the room to shower as well. So we've got somewhere to sleep. We've got a shower. We've got somewhere to go and get some food now. I've also spoke to her about renting a golf cart. So I might rent a golf cart over the next two days so we can run back and forth. See if there's any women on the island. Because we've got some time to burn. <laughs> we've got like, we've got four days. It's actually quite a long time. We've got, it's Friday. Friday. Yeah, we've got Saturday, Sunday and Monday. Wait, it's Thursday. Yeah. No, we've got Friday. Friday Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday night. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't think we might survive right <laughs> So we're going to the Thirsty Turtle now. The boys have showered and I'm quite jealous. I might try, I won't just wash my face. But we don't know what's going to be in there. It could just be a load of 50 year old American men. So I'm fine by me. Then yeah, it's fine for you and Jack, but <laughs> I'm out of the question. Again, what have we got? Open, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Nice one, thank you. We should have been open. Good. Mm, unbelievable. Literally one of the best burger and chips I've ever eaten. I've eaten a lot of burger and chips. Cheers, mate. Bluetooth in this one. Wouldn't get another cheeseburger, would I? <laughs> We're now walking down the exact same road that we did yesterday afternoon, but in a very much more comfortable position. Cheryl sorted us out with uh, somewhere dry to sleep overnight and it's certainly got gusty and, and wet. It's not exactly synonymous with stormy now, it's just unfavorable weather for us to make our push to the States. Oh yeah, what happened last night as well? We went to a couple of lovely bars. We basically had a, a tour of all of the South South Bimini, went to two local bars and then one more touristy bar. I spoke to the guy that's the head of is a shark diving company in North Bimini and we're hopefully going to get in the water, get underwater with some sharks one of our spare days depending on the weather. Uh, and then things got a bit wild in that local bar at the end. There was uh, <laughs> an animated Bahamian man trying to tell us some stories or somewhere between trying to tell us some stories and start a fight. It was quite unclear but <laughs> nice little local evening then got our heads down and now we've got a full day of exploring today essentially. So we're walking along this path again. We're gonna make our way, take the ferry across to North Bimini and just have a scout around. I'm gonna buy a shit shirt as well because I'm running out of clothes. I think Brucey wants another one. We're all gonna choose each other's shit shirts so no one's getting away with a shirt that's not proper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll take you with us and let's see how we get the ferry across and what it's like. We've got about a mile walk this morning to get to breakfast. Really weird, this place is like deserted but not deserted, it's all pristine but there's no one here. And I reckon there's never anyone here. Cheryl was saying people turn up for their various holidays, but it's unlikely that they all coordinate at exactly the same time. We're gonna try and find a restaurant now. You know where it is, Jack? <laughs> it's 
bit windy out here yeah. and we're not going to pretend to be cultural anymore. These are the boats, this is our lovely view. And now we're going to get our scran in from inside, <laughs> from safety. <laughs> <laughs> hey Cheryl. Do you want a coffee mate? How are no, you? I'm alright, thanks mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're at the petite con. That's us. <laughs> Looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, we've made the ferry across three dollars per person, and now we're meandering our way through the main town. One of our side missions is to get a shit shirt each, as mentioned previously. And now we're at Radio Beach. Obviously, we're not going to see it in its full glory because of the weather, but this is one of the nicest beaches on North Bimini that we're going to stroll through now. Then go and chat to the shark diving people after. This is quite a nice beach, isn't it? Oh, nice actually. Got an 18 pound cannon from. <laughs> Could ask you the same question, Brucey. <laughs> so we're at the dolphin house. The sir. It's a contested sir. Sir Rick Ashley. A Ashley Saunders built this place since 1993. It's made out of tiles and loads of aquatic stuff. These guys think Ashley lives there. I don't know if this is the way in. This is the actual house, I guess. Have you got a keyboard here? Yeah, well, a piano. No matter where you are in the world, all churches smell the same. They've got that churchy smell. These places remind me of being bored out of my mind, having to see a, sing hymns on a stiff wooden seat for my entire childhood. We're here for lunch, we're gonna have some conch salads, one each. Now we've got a god on our side, not gonna go wrong, <laughs> Brucey's gift of the gab has found us some friends, so we're hitching a ride in a golf cart with a load of Americans and going to the next bar. There's nothing else to do. We've explored all of Bimini now, south and north. It's basically conch salad bars, beer bars, and this is one of them. We're going to do the one constructive thing to do on this island, which is diving. Other than that, it's just boozing. And these guys have a boat. We've found ourselves in worse situations, that much is certain. All right, folks, let's talk business. Firstly, ignore the Savlon, a couple of spots brewing as a result of the hygienic hurdles over the last few days. But just had a fresh shower, freshened up for the evening. We had an interesting day up on North Bimini today with a few Southern Americans, as Southern as they come. <laughs> Getting the beers in, obviously surrounded by rain. So not many activities to fill our boots with. Got the beers in, went out on a speedboat, saw some bull sharks, pretty eventful day. And now we are chilling a bit before we go out to the Tiki bar again. That was the best bar we went to last night for dinner. The momentum has really slowed down while we're waiting for this crazy weather to pass. So we're gonna have a bigger, biggish night out. Brucey's on the beers and when you get him on the beers, you can't really stop him. So <laughs> why fight a force of nature when you can just join? So that's what we're gonna do. I have a big, biggish night tonight. Then we've got Saturday and Sunday to fill before Monday we'll hopefully get out with the sharks and then push off for a gruelling final battle with the elements to get to Palm Beach. It's going to be a hell of a rip current. I'll talk to you more about it when we get on the water, but that's the plan as things stand. Well, time flies when you're getting up to no good. That was a couple of days of being weather bound and we had nothing to do other than meander around the island and uh, see what fun we could have. For the last day, got into the casino, got invited onto a boat, had a lovely dinner. Now it's time to get back to business. It's our final day 
on Bimini Island. Oh yeah, Brucey last night didn't enjoy, we're trying to get through the freeze dry rations because we worked out exactly how many we need as we got exactly 24 hours left of rowing left, which I'll get into very shortly. And so we had a creme brulee each from that backpacker's pantry and it really didn't go down the right way with Brucey. So we all had a little bit of a laugh about, yeah, him, him throwing that one back up again. He said he was most annoyed about the fact that he missed out on the one and a half thousand calories that he spewed up. But anyway, back to business and it's Monday. It is day 10 of trying to make this crossing. The weather started to calm down. It's no longer raining, thank God. And we are at Bimini Scuba Center to have a bit of fun before we get back on the boat. It's now 9.30 a.m. and we've been invited to do some shark diving today. So I believe it's gonna be a two hour unlimited refill shark dive, not too deep. Jack's gonna be on the dive as well. We're expecting hammerheads, Caribbean reef sharks, might be a couple of other surprises as well. We've seen obviously a load of bull sharks in the marina around the boat, so they're definitely in the water. And also we've seen a tiger shark at a previous episode of this trip. We might see a tiger shark today as well. Super excited. So we're gonna get the diving done now in this beautiful water. I'm hoping we'll have clear visibility. We'll see what happens. And then we get back on the boat for the final push to the USA through the night. It's gonna be, it's got about 24 hours of rowing. We're looking at about 70 nautical miles. Hopefully we're just rowing through tonight. Then we get there by sunset tomorrow, but anything's possible. And with that Gulf Stream, you never know which way you're gonna be blown. So we're gonna head due west. So we'll get blown north, uh, north of Miami. And hopefully we make it up to Palm Beach and don't get blown all the way past it. Oh yeah, also got a workout in as well. We were getting a bit of a cabin fever being stuck in one place and obviously working out. When you're rowing, it's a lot of hamstring, a bit of quad, a lot of calf actually. The entirety of your back and a bit of bicep, but barely any chest. We got a push workout in, Jack and I, we did 450 press-ups in 45 minutes, which works out at 10 a minute on the minute. Kit has been organized and secured and we've met the crew. We're actually very early because of the unpredictability of island time. We managed to get a lift and get on the ferry straight away. So we've got 45 minutes to kill, getting a coffee in now and then we're gonna be out on the boat. Jack asked Alex how far to the dive site, and it's 15 minutes, so nice quick turnaround. And it is a two hour dive with two tanks and definitely hammers, and hopefully there's a couple of resident tigers, so we might get lucky with them as well. Yeah. Feeling pumped, mate? Yes, mate, can't wait. But... All right, mate, wetsuit's on. Let's get in the water. And not get eaten. And not get eaten, that's sort of vital, otherwise we won't be rowing anywhere <laughs> this evening, mate. So yeah, let's go. a job well done that was eight hammerheads in total visibility was average but certainly did the job not too many nuisance nurse sharks so we got some good time with the hammers less than 30 centimeters above our heads swimming past awesome about an hour and 15 in the water in total and then a bit of a green cloud of poor visibility came in we're headed off now dives completed and what a pleasure that was. My first time getting that close with hammerheads. I obviously dived with them in the Galapagos, but yeah, that was a pleasure. And Jack's first time proper shark diving as well. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Really good, thoroughly enjoyable, super close. You could see, see the teeth from right Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. Amazing, it's epic. We're headed back to the mainland now, get some scran in, and then meet up with Brucey. Yeah. The final meal before the final push. Mmm, we love a burger. How many burgers have we had so far, do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. A lot. Pretty much one every meal. At least seven. Mm. So it's like 2 p.m. now, and then we'll meet Brucey. Excuse me, guys. And we'll get going with the boat. It's too windy. No problem. That's fine. And the wind might get up under it, and someone might get hurt. Safety we first. We don't want you guys to get hurt. Thank you for looking out for us. 
final walk on North Bimini as we make our way back to South Bimini for the also the final time. Scram that burger just in time to have another burger. Yep, so we're gonna meet Brucey now on the South Island and then we're ready to push off. What a perfect last day after basically three days of drinking and fun around. Yeah, turning rations into shit. Yeah, one of our favorite expressions now. Round two, Jack. Fueling up. You wanna be on YouTube, Cheryl? <laughs> Okay, all being well, this is the final time we'll see land until we see the yeah. white sandy beaches of America. Boat is ready to go. We got it all prepped yesterday. Obviously, we dodged the storm effectively. The winds should be in our favor. Between us, we've got five burgers inside of our stomachs, so that should be plenty of fuel. And just wanted to thank Cheryl one last time for her wonderful help on the, on the deserted island of South Bimini. So <laughs> she's a superstar. Fair thank you very much. Brucey, feeling good? Yeah, decent, mate. Yeah, and Jack, ready to go. We don't need that fender anymore, do we? Ready to go, mate. Got awesome. the England shirt on for a bit of good luck. Yeah, right. Britannia rules the waves and all yeah. that. Here we go. So we'll get a picture, and then I've got stint number one, two hours on the go to get us out this inlet. Let's get it. We are navigating some sizable swell at sunset. We've been going for three hours now. Brucey is on the oars. Got the sun setting behind me. This is the kind of medium-sized swell we're dealing with now, riding the waves and we are going to be going through the night non-stop and we're hoping to get to West Palm Beach by the time before the sun sets tomorrow. So we're due about 24 hours more of rowing. We're trying to hold a due west bearing at 270-ish degrees for as long as possible because the current is just going to whip us north as much as it wants. So Miami is due west of us. We're going to try and hold that bearing and but as a matter of course, we're just going to get blown towards West Palm Beach. Last sunset out on the water. It's been a pleasure of a journey so far. Come out to enjoy this one, even though my shift starts in another half an hour. And we will battle through the night. Hopefully have no major upsets, make some good mileage, and see you first thing in the morning. Jeez. Good morning, after a full night of two ons and two offs, we have now got West Palm Beach in sight. We absolutely nailed the pace. I said to you at the start of this that we're hoping to do it in 24 hours. It's more like 16, because we've averaged six knots and just kept a dead on course with a, a Floridian coastline. And so you can see behind me all those skyscrapers. That is what we're aiming for now. We are three miles out and in search of an inlet. And then we've got a contact waiting for us to get this boat out of the water at some point this morning as well. So final push now, Jack and I on the oars, all the way in, then it's gonna be job well done. Welcome to America to us, and welcome to America to ORB Endurance. She's alive. Hold well on, Jack. Gosh. Expedition complete. Good job. Oh, Brucey. What's the door? Yes, bro. Yes. Oh, your dick's, oh in, no. your dick's on YouTube. We can blur that one out, can't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blur the whole screen, mate. Oh, we made it. For better or for worse, what a, what a brilliant expedition. And now we're just going to tidy up a bit of the boat, get something in the system, maybe go and grab a coffee or something, and there, or a pint for Brucey, or a cheeseburger for Jack. And, and then, you, don't yeah. lie, don't lie. I don't eat cheeseburgers. Oh yeah, we added them up last night. Six cheeseburgers in five days it was. Yeah, sort the boat out and then we're gonna get out of the water. Let's go. Health, peak health. Adam, yes. a spaghetti and meatballs from a tin? Definitely not. <laughs> Ah, oh, big thank you to Riley and Sito company who squared us away from Palm Beach and gave us a lift back down again after. So the boat is now nice and secure. We're optimizing our health with monsters and chocolates. We're going to play some cards and we booked a place in Hollywood for the night where I'll give you a debrief of how everything went down. The boys are back in town. We've had a wash, we've had a shower, had some food. Yeah, had a lot of scran. 
and we're feeling fresh. We just need a shave. That's all that's left, really. Bruce is going to wait till the UK to get his sorted. To get rid of that big old bushy beard. Decided to lump everything together all in one video so that we could give you the full debrief on what our favourite and our least favourite moments were from the 10 days at sea. And we're going to go through now. Obviously, if you haven't seen all of the episodes, you need to go back and check them. And we're going to have various media on all of our channels as well. So Bruce is setting up a new Instagram. Go and check that out if you haven't yet. And Jack's editing some long form content so i'll put the link to any relevant media all in the description however it works i mean it probably out. won't be as good as this but <laughs> it's just a different perspective you know and i'm learning you know the editing yeah so yeah just if you if you have got a slack 10 minutes please feel free to watch and you'll also maybe get a glimpse of various extra body parts because there was a lot of nudity on on that boat yeah, so. a lot of nudity and maybe brucey won't be as shy as i am yeah <laughs> so best moments and worst moments let's talk about yeah there was that moment when you woke up in the middle of the night jack and things weren't what you expected yeah, it's, to so find. probably worst i wouldn't say worst but definitely most stressful was waking up at six in the morning hour before i had to come on and go to the cabin see brucey's you know very tired and he's working hard only doing about half a knot and then i'm like just something didn't feel right you know the atmospherics were off so i checked the nav <laughs> We're actually drifting towards the reef. So uh, yeah, as you're rowing, two hours ago, I'd just, I'm just following a bearing from the last nav check and didn't realize that we were in a different current that was pushing us towards a coral reef. So I had no idea. I thought I was following a bearing and the going was getting a bit sticky. Yeah. <laughs> but then I, did, I had no idea that we were actually moving north as well as west as west. we were supposed to be doing. And this was in video number one on the water. So yeah. it was literally that first morning. Right at the start. My first experience of ocean rowing and like I woke up at maybe 6 a.m. I think it was. Jack yanks open the cabin, shoves a spaghetti meatballs down my throat says you've got four minutes to eat this adam because yeah. we're doing two hours on one hour off and we were rowing relentlessly as jack yeah. said and not making any distance on that reef. yeah so we had to for the next six hours we had to go two hours on the oars an hour off and this basically guarantees that we'd always have two people rowing at any one time to allow us to punch through the conditions and we then spent about six hours doing 0.7 of a knot so we settled into the afternoon and into the early evening and that's exactly when we landed at the nassau sailing club kind of at the end of that very first stint another man test as soon as we landed there <laughs> who wants to talk Had through a few this one beers and sandwiches that they very generously provided to us thank you royal nassau, nassau sailing, sailing club, club. yeah Thank you. And then we were anticipating a period of being stormbound due to some inclemency that was coming through. However, after rechecking the charts, it appeared we had a 12 to 24 hours to make it to Fraser Hogkey. So the difficult decision was made to get some mileage in the bag while the sun shines, so to speak. And so we had the taste of a burger and a quick shower and then pushed off again. Straight back on the water. Yeah, a happy accident that we, we was very fortunate. Should have really planned this, but didn't. Turned out we caught the best of the tide going through the Nassau yeah. Channel. Yeah. And that was a wonderful and sailed moment through at there at five knots into a sunset. Yeah, and yeah. It actually felt quite nice. That's yeah, good. it just flushed us out and on our way. Sweetened so. the deal of leaving yeah. Nassau. Exactly. So my worst, my moment do you want to go favorite moment yeah yeah for sure and it was very soon after we're doing well to keep this in chronological order so my favorite moment was when we landed in Fraser Hog Key on, on Chubb Key Island and we kind of found this random pontoon didn't even know if it was going to be inhabited turned out it barely was and then the fantastic family that we ended up spending yeah. two days with all the family members came out as you saw and we obviously spent some time on the catamaran meandering through the mangroves with that tiger shark but my favorite moment was as we got welcomed inside that morning at 8 a.m after two nights on the bounce and like more than 48 hours straight of rowing and then we're all sat around an oval table we felt like weathered yeah, sailors yeah, yeah. welcomed into this family invited to have a oh, bagel well, and a coffee well, exactly yeah. generous yeah so, so generous so grateful and then it turned out to be two incredible days like spearfishing for our own food making like honestly like an extended family so that was my favorite moment yeah so that's my favorite moment and i think these two have very different but also very special moments to go through jack what was yours it's still in chronological order actually yeah it? so we pushed off from fraser hog key went to bimini and definitely diving with sharks and with hammerhead sharks and nurse sharks and we actually just missed a tiger but yeah that was absolutely incredible big thank you to neil watson at the bimini dive center amazing hospitality really nice staff very knowledgeable found the hammerheads not only did they find them but they found seven of them incredible they're huge much bigger than i thought <laughs> big yeah. beast like 14 foot long really nice of the dive center to help coordinate with our limited time on the island to get that done and brucey what was yours well my favorite moment has to be some of the degeneracy that happened on bimini island <laughs> <laughs> certain things don't bear talking about to the camera what happens on bimini stays on bimini yeah. spring break Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, in all, in all seriousness, one of my favourite moments of this expedition has to be the trip from Bimini to Florida, where we were stuck on that Atlantic conveyor belt that is the Gulf Stream. And I found myself riding one evening alone on the oars, topping seven knots, which is absolutely unheard of in the ocean rowing world. True. We thought it might take up to 36 hours, but as you saw in this episode, we set off in the evening at like 4 or 5 p.m. and we managed to get here for just after sunrise. What's that, 18 hours? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So 75 76. miles, mate. Yeah. yeah, we I'm absolutely good. flew through. And then just in time to kind of get things tied off with the boat, get a bit freshened up, get some food in, had a lovely dinner last night with one of Bruce's old mates. And before we finish things off, a quick word on the fantastic hospitality that was extended to us throughout all of the trip. At the start in Governor's Harbour, Clem and Nancy were absolutely fantastic, and Mike and Abigail. Awesome they were. Cheryl at Bimini Island, you were also really hospitable. Thank you for letting us stay. Captain Ryan at Seato, Stuart, unbelievable service. Got the boat off the water really quickly and then gave us a lift back downtown. Yeah, everyone did above and beyond everything that we needed. What an incredible adventure, incredible expedition. And to think I didn't even know Brucey at the start of this, 10 days at sea, and it's certainly the way to bond very quickly, isn't it? Thank you so much for joining this entire series and for being part of this crazy adventure, not knowing how it would end up from start to end. Like I said, check out these guys' stuff, both on Instagram and on YouTube. Any relevant media is gonna be in the description. And as always, I'll see you on the next adventure. Cheers.